So a lot of time us online content creators slash gear reviewers, gear testers, whatever terminology you want to assign to us, uh, end up getting a bad rap because a lot of the product that we end up putting out as far as like video for you guys to consume um, ends up being pro the product that we're doing a video on. Um, even if it's critical, it ends up being pro. And the broader internet interprets that as us being shills for free product. And what that really is, is people just jealous that, um, that they don't do what we do. Um, or or unsuccessful at us at doing what we do, but um, I can't speak to the process that other people use. Uh, I can only speak to what I do, and I can tell you honestly that if I'm not interested in a product, it doesn't matter if you offer to send it to me for free, or if um, you offer to pay me to evaluate it. If I'm not interested in it, it's going to be a hard no, um, right out the gate. Doesn't matter. Likewise, I'm not going to go out and pursue product that I find boring or ineffective or in, insert whatever here that I have disqualified that thing as something I'm interested in. Unless, of course, I receive an appreciable uh, amount of feedback from the audience like, hey, dude, you need to go look at that thing. Uh, I think you're wrong. Okay, well, I ha there's a lot of you and I'm only one of me, so um, I have to uh, kind of meter that a little bit, check myself and say, oh, okay, well, if people are actually interested in this thing, maybe I should take a look. So what it really comes down to is integrity. And VSO has established itself through many years of work within the firearms industry as a organization with the utmost integrity that thoroughly evaluates everything that they put out and has a drive to be correct about things. Because I don't know who is watching this. I mean, if it's just a basement dweller that wants to buy the next, you know, tactical thing, sure. But there might be a dude over there uh, in the sandbox that's just watching this and maybe, you know, retrofitting his equipment with uh, after factory options because the government div didn't give him good enough stuff or maybe broke something. So I can't be wrong, right? When, it, when I've got the possibility of that dude looking at something that I recommend, um, I don't know why he's taking advice from me anyway, but um, I can't be wrong for that dude, right? So to that effect, I don't know where this thing came from, right? Um, this is a clinger holster right there. Um, I don't man all the email addresses. I don't know how uh, this made it to my desk, but uh, this is the packaging it comes in. Uh, I don't know if one of my dudes gave in the PO box or whatever, but it arrived in the PO box. And this is what we're gonna be looking at here today. And the topic of this is why you don't buy crappy holsters, right? You wanna make sure that you have a rigid, hard holster uh, for the, this is a Glock 19 holster, this is Glock 26, but you want a hard holster that protects your firearm, and this is why. To the desk, and this is not the most rugged testing surface here, but it will do for today's demo. Holster and firearm, right there, and um, a quality holster, just for reference. And I happen to use NSR just because I know the owner of the company. Uh, and I know the process that he uses for the manufacture of his holsters and it's built around his training experience. I think that's exceptionally valuable. So I choose to use Dave's uh, holster because he's a, he's a good dude, right? So we'll set that aside. We'll come back to that here for a second. And this is just a tool, but we're going to use it as a representation of things that would be rolling around your pockets, like maybe an Allen key, a pen, loose ammunition, uh, maybe the corner of your seat belt. And this is why you do not select a flexible walled holster like this or something like a leather holster. You want a hard bodied fitted holster for your, for your modern handgun. So here we go. So all I'm going to do is very simply get in there and you can see very little pressure. Boom. That was the striker falling. You can see that trigger has been depressed there. That's bad. Well, is it repeatable? Here we go. Put it back in there. And, you know, you hop into your truck, whatever. It's winter time. You got a lot of extra stuff going on. Um, you're not as flexible because you got lots of clothing on. And you just kind of plop down into your seat. And the... Uh, corner of your seat belt pushes down on the sidewall of the holster. And now you just indeed 
probably into your butt cheek. Uh, it's probably hurting pretty bad um, and you are not having a very good day. Conversely, if we put it in something like this, good luck, right? Like, like I can't even mark it with all of my body weight. So does it work? Not really even, unfortunately. It's supposed to work around kind of like a, um, a friction lock system where it goes between your person and your pants and then the tension there uh, creates friction and keeps the thing from moving around. I find it highly ineffective, um, and this was definitely not designed by anybody who has taken a dynamics firearms course in their life, that's for certain. Um, if you look at any footage of any defensive encounter, a lethal force defensive encounter, it's an athletic event, and this does not allow athleticism, that's for sure. So this was designed probably by somebody who shoots all the time on a flat range, um, square box range, um, and is probably not even allowed to draw their holster at their gun club either. So, um, guys out there, don't make crappy gear. Don't send it here. And you guys should know better. Don't buy it if it is marketed as a comfortable solution to concealed carry, then it is probably wrong in one way, shape, or form. So, Concealed carry is supposed to be comforting, not comfortable. And that's all I have to say about that. We will be at SHOT Show this week. Uh, if you guys see us, make sure that you shout us out. We have a couple big booth um, things that we're doing. So uh, coverage is gonna be very different this year than it has been in years past. We'll be doing a lot of stuff here on YouTube and on Full 30, but also I want you guys to go over and hit the like button on our Facebook page, move us to the top of your feed so that uh, you won't miss out on any of the live feed that we're gonna be doing from our Facebook page. Should be a lot of fun. Um, we just wanted to do things a little bit different this year for SHOT Show because we're just kind of sick of the monotonous same thing over and over again. And you know us, trying to be different. And if you've got a little bit more meat down below, um, there's squishiness there and this doesn't work very well for that. Or if you're hairy like me, right? Um, this just is not comfortable at all.